Welcome to Electron Line, and again, to, in order to understand bonding a little bit better, we're going to take another close look at the bonding theory, the basics. And so here we're going to take a look at the methane molecule. One carbon, four hydrogen makes the methane, and the Lewis structure of methane looks like this. We have a carbon atom that has four valence electrons. They're used for each of the four bonds with the hydrogen. Each hydrogen only has one valence electron, so there's a pair of electrons in each bond. And so that's what the molecule looks like from a Lewis structure perspective. Of course, that's not really what the molecule will look like in real life. If that's what the molecule looked like, uh, it would look kind of like this. And there's a one basic problem with that. Because in these electron pairs, you know, there's regions where electrons are joined together, where they are in phase, not out of phase, and therefore destroy each other, but the electrons that are in these bonding pairs between hydrogen and carbon, they're in phase, so they're, they're allowed to be in the same region. They do have a negative charge associated with it. So these have a negative charge associated with them. The end of the molecule right here, the hydrogen has somewhat of a positive charge associated with it. And so there's going to be repulsive forces between the electron pairs. There's going to be repulsive forces between the hydrogens. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. And this particular arrangement does not allow them to do that. This particular arrangement only allows a 90 degree um, uh, angle between the bonds, and so they're a little bit closer together, repulsive force a little bit greater, that's not a likely scenario. What we do find out is that the methane molecule looks something like that. It looks like a tetrahedron, uh, it's tetrahedral shape, and so you can see that here the bond angles are as large as they can possibly be. They end up being 109.5 degrees in any direction. So what we're seeing is that the repulsive forces between the, the electron bond pairs is very important in determining the physical structure of the molecule. So what I try to do there is draw one of those molecules and with the realization that the angle between any two of the electron bond pairs is 109.5 degrees. Between these two, again, it's 109.5 degrees and so forth, 109.5 degrees. And then if you think about the particular shape, Notice that this is a tetrahedron shape, four sides, all triangular in shape, and so you find that the carbon atom is right in the middle of that tetrahedron, and the hydrogens are at the four points of the tetrahedron. So again, that allows for the maximum repulsive forces to push the hydrogen atoms into a direction so that it is in what we would call the lowest energy state. Now there's another problem with that because our basic understanding of the orbitals and where the electrons are at, you can see that for a carbon atom we have two electrons in the first s orbital, two electrons in the second s orbital, and then two electrons in two of the three p orbitals. And you would think that in, in an initial assessment that the carbon would only have two electrons for bonding uh, because there's only two, two orbitals there that have a single electron. But somehow, all four of these electrons in the Vela shell get, up, get used in the bonding process in the case of a, met a methane molecule like this. So how does that happen? There's something else taking place here that doesn't get explained very easily by looking at the orbital shapes like that. Notice, if you look at a carbon atom, it has a 1s orbital with two electrons in it. Typically, in the inner shell like that, if it's not part of valence shell, these two electrons will not be involved in bonding. Now we have the 2s shell right here with two electrons in it. Again, typically you wouldn't expect those two electrons to be involved in bonding because they form a complete orbital. It's completely filled. There's no sharing that needs to take place there. So that doesn't seem to be like a likely scenario. Then you have the three p orbitals, one in the y direction, one in the x direction, one in the z direction. Only two of those three can have a single electron in them. So I just arbitrarily chose this orbital and that orbital right there. And so you would think that those are the two orbitals that are going to be used in bonding. But again, we know that's not the case because carbon forms a molecule with four hydrogens. So somehow something happens to these orbitals and these orbital shapes so that all four of these electrons can be used in the bonding to end up with a tetrahedral shape like that. And so what we're going to discover in a few more videos down the run, down the into the future here, that these orbital shapes will actually change because of the interaction between the electrons and to form shapes that are more likely to exist 
in the real world where the bonding can then occur in such a way that the whole molecule is at its lowest energy state. It's all about what the lowest energy state is. And in this case, that would be obtained when you have the maximum bond angles between the four uh, bonds. So that change of shape of those orbitals is actually called hybridization. And we're going to take a look at that in our future videos, that the shape of those molecules actually changed to allow that bonding to take place. So several of these, these uh, orbitals will join together to form a new structure. And again, it all has to do with the repulsive forces between the all the electrons and the Schrodinger equation. Of course, at the level when you start talking about things like carbon atoms, it's very difficult to predict those shapes. Uh, from a pure mathematical perspective, because it's a very complicated equation, but from a visual perspective and from a logical perspective, but when we take into account the repulsive force of the electrons, we can come up with shapes that seem to make sense. And so we came up with this theory called hybridization that allows us to come up with the predicted molecule shapes the way they really are. And so, again, this is just a basic introduction. If you stick around and look at a few more videos, you'll see how we develop that theory and how it actually makes a lot of sense and how we can actually predict the shapes of the molecules using that hybridization theory. So we'll get to that in just a moment.